Welcome to The Business Coach, a show in which you are to help entrepreneurs better their business. My name is Ian Dennis and tonight on the show we'll be exploring the advertising business, which is core to any particular business. I'll be meeting up with entrepreneurs who are out to ensure that your business is on the radar. On the first half of the show, I'll be meeting up with Emos, who's not only an entrepreneur but is a celebrity, I'm sure, well known to you guys at home. I want to find out how his journey has been in terms of running an SME. And after the break, I'll be linking him up to Lenny Nganga of Saracen, which is not only one of the biggest, if, the, if not the biggest, advertising agency in the country. So welcome to the show. It was, yeah, you know you as the musician. Yeah. <laughs> but something quite interesting about you is that you have another side of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're an entrepreneur. Yes, sir. Tell me about it. How did you get up? How did you get into the advertising agency business? Um, I've always been an, an all-round creative. Um, so I just have tell me it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's an expression. Yeah. It's an expression. So yeah, so the artistry in itself has been just something I've been involved in for a very long time. Um, and, and it was only natural for me to, since I've been doing uh, graphic design, um, the company has evolved uh, so different times. I did graphic design, I did production. I so that's what you studied in school? Singles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I studied uh, mass and communication. Um, mm -hmm. It was basically TV production um, and, and radio. radio oh, so it was a natural and journalism, fit. Yes. So basically it just, it just worked with me um, and, and the company just evolved. And since I was providing out the full range of what uh, people in advertising do, it is easier for me as a public figure to also, you know, get into that space. I figured, hey, why not? Let me just, you know, just customize my company and just remove some things here and there and just move it as a marketing company. Interesting. As an advertising agency. Interesting. And most of you know you, or rather how the public and people who are watching you know you as the other side, you as an artist. Yeah, yeah. So how, how do you combine that? How do you manage to juggle between now doing what the people know you for and actually doing business. Does you, what's it called, does the brand you've built through music aid you through the business, or how has it been? Um, it's an interesting question. It's actually, um, it's it's very fluid, I can say. Since since the, the world I'm involved in is, is art, is artistic by, by its nature, I see my, my public um, brand and figure as a butler for my business, because it becomes easier for me to walk into doors without introducing myself. But, Basically, once I get into once I get into any door, it's my competence in the product that I'm, you know, providing for them, or the solutions that I'm providing. The competence for that is what keeps me um, in that kind of business. But the name of that I've built as an artist is what basically gets me through the door. Um, so it's it, it works it works so well, um, in, in, and it helps me also um, in regards to character. You see, now if you're a public figure and people know you, you have to maintain a certain level of decency. Um, if you're a corporate person, because that helps you in, you know, maintaining side, certain uh, corporate relationships if you want to do business. So one of the things that very few people know about you is that mm -hmm. at one particular point you employed in this particular yeah. business. Take me through your experience. How exactly was it, and what made you transition <laughs> from employment to now setting up your own business? I think all, all creatives are a problem with employment mm -hmm. uh, because it, it's kind of limited. It cuts across all. Yeah, it kind of limits your expression. <laughs> And sometimes you need your own space to challenge your own creativity to grow. Um, one of the challenges I had um, in, in being employed, my, the biggest, I would say, redundancy. That so take me through how exactly was the transition now? At what point did you decide to set up your company and how exactly was it? Um, the transition, it's, it's never really easy. It's usually a decision. Mm -hmm. um, and that decision has to be made. It's never an easy decision to say, I want to leave employment to start a business. Um, of course, because of how they were paying me, I had some good capital mm -hmm. to start. Um, and it, it was not easy. Like, I ate through any, the, the company, like, ate through the, the capital. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> so fast. <laughs> you have a lot of money, but you don't. Yeah, you don't. You know, you really, really don't. And I saw the sense of, you know, having, being employed as you build a company until your company gets on its feet and then you have to transition. So it was either that, or I just say not. Um, let me just get into it and then just go out there and try and find it. I realized very, very fast that it was not as easy as I thought. Um, um, being in the shelter of an employee sometimes, <laughs> sometimes keeps you from taking certain risks, um, and, and you are very blinded to um, the kind of grind that is necessary yeah. for a person who is entrepreneur in entrepreneurship. 
com being what's it called being in business and also the other end you've built a brand through music. How do you manage to juggle between both? How do you have time to save and time to be, to do business? Because <laughs> they're all two different businesses. Yeah. How do you manage to combine both? Yeah, I have been accused of being an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. um, I've been accused of being being too much into into working mm -hmm. that I never have time for um, myself. <laughs> you leisure, should never forget yourself. Or leisure yeah. or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, I've broken up with girlfriends because of that. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, it's, it's, a very, it's very interesting. But I, I don't think, I think with the life God has given us, we have a capacity to do more. Mm -hmm. And if I, have, if I have not solved the problems that I, I feel I was born to solve, mm -hmm. I don't think I've done enough. I'm not saying, I've, I've learned to, um, to live as I work, you know. So your work is the work is literally work is life. Your work is life, life is work. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because music in itself is life. Yeah. Um. And 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 it brings a lot of joy to me to do music and, and art and just give it the creative space. Because as my juices, as my creative juices flow, I find so much fulfillment in that. I find so much fulfillment in creating music. I find so much fulfillment in creating films. Mm -hmm. I find so much fulfillment in doing these kind of things. Yeah. And and and. Um, the people who are involved with me in that world, plus my friends, <laughs> okay, are the people who I get hung out with, I come fun with. So, and you I you know, so, you off. so sometimes, even in the off time, it's still business because you're still thinking of creative things. Um, and I love living in that space. Uh, and yeah. being still probably, what's it called, that SME, what are some of the challenges you've been experiencing in your business? What exactly have been some of the hurdles you've been facing? Because yes. nothing comes without a hard look. Yeah. I think the greatest challenge is, um, is cash flow. Cash flow sometimes is one of them. Um, it, because it keeps things not, um, it slows down even the operations um, in the office. Um, because, you know, without ca cash flow is basically cash just is the lifeblood. Cash is key. Yeah, it's the lifeblood of any business. And we have clients sometimes who we do a lot of work for them and they never pay on time. Some of them just keep us for months without paying us, so we have to keep following up. Um, and <clears throat> just to keep things going, uh, for some of the clients, we have to find a way to get, you know, to get capital to kind of initiate the whole process so that they can pay later, those kind of things. So so it leaves us in a very sometimes awkward uh, position. And and I've, I've learned a lot from that because it has helped me to know how to deal with people who do not want to pay. So almost the last question I like uh, asking every entrepreneur that I have on this show is that, What's your future? What would you like to take this business the next time we come and meet you? Yeah. Um, I'd like to create solutions for Africa. Um, I'd like to solve continental problems. Um, I, I, I would want my company to go to a place where I work with the biggest companies in the world to create marketing strategies for Africa and solve African problems. Yeah, that's my dream. That's quite big. That's my dream. Yeah. That's quite big. I know you're, you're an artist. I wish this was yeah. a singing show. Yeah. I would have told you to finish up with a singing yeah, yeah, yeah. or a choral verse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you have to go on a break. So, ladies and gentlemen, keep it right here on the business coach where we help entrepreneurs better their businesses. So, after the break, I'll be linking up Amos to one of the most established entrepreneurs in the advertising business. So, don't touch that dial. <laughs>